What is up, everybody? ODC, and I'm back. ODC here, I should say, and I'm back with another live review. Get these guys set up properly here. He's standing weird. I'll fix him. And we'll set this guy over here. Like so. E E A beautiful. There we go. That's a lot better. Now we're cooking. Now we are cooking. I don't know with what, but we're cooking. All right, so I got my Wave 2.0 from Mythic Legions today in mail. Um, I did upload a unboxing video today, so if you guys want to check that out on my Facebook page, you can. But here is today's review. I haven't done a Mythic Legions video in quite some time, so... It's so fitting, and the timing couldn't be better, that I do these two gentlemen right here. Um, but let me see what's going on here. There we go. All right, perfect. I'm just setting up my stuff. All right. What's going on, everyone? How is everybody doing today on this fine Saturday? Hopefully you're having a good day today. Give him back a little bit. You're a little too close. Carpathius is... You're upsetting Carpathius' uh, space here. His physical space there, Delta Car. But uh, today we have... Sorry for the loud clap. Just excited. Today we have Deltagar the Destroyer, and we have Carpathius. Carpathius, a guy I missed out on in uh, Wave 1.0. Luckily, we got uh, the fans voted for him enough to get him re-released in this 2.0 wave. I got to mute. <coughs> Whoa, that was a big sneeze. I don't know where it came from all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it was nice enough that we actually got a second shot at him, and I, I want to say that um, I, I want to say that it's it's a it's a pleasure to finally have him, and uh, I really was excited for Delta Gar. I know it's probably not everyone's cup of tea, seeing as it's actually the characters based off a of fan. Um, I'll get to all of that when I start discussing talking about Delta Gar, but I'm going to start off with Carpathius right now. So let me push him aside really quick. And we will discuss Mr. Carpathius here. So, Pox, what's going on, man? Welcome to the live review. Let me get all of his accessories here. Um, the, the, also, the other cool thing is that these All-Star Wave figures do come with their back adapters, like they, um, the um, Advent of Decay figures came. So there's all three of your adapters. If you need them, if you want to know about them there you go so i'm probably i was actually considering giving him wings to be honest with you those bone wings but uh, i'll have to outsource those somehow but anyway taking a close look at him let's get him in here really close look at that face that is a face only a vampire mother could love you know really is you can remove this collar I'm pretty sure for the majority of people watching this review, uh, you know that these figures are pretty much 100% modular. You can pretty much break them down to pretty much nothing if you need to. Gaz, what's going on, buddy? Um, so you can remove the head. You can remove the neck peg that attaches from the body to the head. You can remove that. You can remove this collar piece, these pauldrons. You can remove the torso piece from the lower torso, um, the thigh joints, the knee joints, the feet, the hands, the swivels, uh, the forearms right here, the arms out of the body, and the elbows. So you can pretty much tear this guy down um, and uh, interchange him with any other Mythic Legions action figure. So that's just kind of wanted to note that because some people... We're saying, you didn't tell your last review, you didn't say that uh, they're modular. Like at this point, you should probably know that. 
I don't need to tell you. And if you have to tell me that, then why? what's the point? I already know. You know. So what's the point of bringing it up? Right? Hi-yo! Win for, win for both of us. Um, like I said, you can have him set up any way you want. You can have the, him without the collar. You can have him with the collar. I'll show you without the collar really quick. Just pop that off. Pop it off, yo. Pop it off. There you go. So if you like him without the collar, he doesn't need one. But uh, there you go with that. Um, there was a, a subscriber that actually a, 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 uh, hit me up via Facebook Messenger. Was had a couple questions, and I'm glad to have helped him out. Uh, I'm not going to bring up his name in case he doesn't want his name being known to everyone. But um, you don't have to necessarily buy a car, bunch of Carpathiuses to fit with the rest of your, um, uh, I don't know, other Legion builders in case you want to swap the head. Um, or even Baron Volgar. Um, this way you have a differentiation between uh, Baron Volgar and Carpathius. You can actually use the extra head that comes with the um, the Legion Builder. I guess they're not technically Legion Builders. I always call them Legion Builders. It's just like what I call them. Uh, but you can actually take the, the extra head that comes with the Vampire Knight, the male Vampire Knight, and it fits right on the neck peg. Um it does sit a little bit high up on the neck, but if it doesn't bother you, um, it, it shouldn't be a big issue. But you don't necessarily have to buy a bunch of Carpathiuses to do that, um, if, in case you want a differentiation between him and the rest. But, yeah, the uh, the armor looks good. I mean, this is pretty much the same kind of armor that we've seen in all the other 1.0 figures and a lot of, like, the, the, uh, the other knights that were released previously. Uh, like I said, this is a re-release from Wave 1.0. That's why it's called the All-Star Wave 2.0. So these are all re-releases from Wave 1.0 um, when this whole line started. So you're seeing a lot of kind of like old designs here as, as opposed to what we got with the um, Wave 2.0 with uh, uh, the advent of Decay. He does come with a pretty cool design. As far as color scheme goes, you've got the purple and the black. It works perfectly, I think, for that uh, vampire look. Carpathius is a high-ranking official in his clan. Um, he's not the type of... He's kind of like a... He's kind of got his own type of maneuvers. He's not the kind of, uh, of uh, militant that's going to go head-to-head uh, -head with you uh, straight on. He's, he's going to try and not, I, I, supposedly he's got a poison speared tip or a poison tipped blades i should say on him plural all of his blades are poison tipped and uh what it does is it paralyzes you after he hits you with his or he strikes you with his tips or his tips <laughs> that sounds funny with his blades and then he likes to go to town as far as feeding upon his victims so he's kind of like uh kind of hiding in the shadows more of a i want to say on the borderline of being an assassin uh, but he does he is a high-ranking official within his clan so um regardless i really like the head sculpt i think the head sculpt is the selling point for this figure um the 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 paint shading going throughout the head looks really good very pleased with that. I love these these nostrils and just the 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 different style vampire teeth. It's kind of like his two feeding teeth are kind of poking out in the front as opposed to usually being on the sides where the canine teeth would be on a human. Um, but he is humanoid, so um, pretty cool. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, pretty much everyone from Ilya uh, Iliaths is that how you say? It? I haven't said her name in so long. Oh my god. Uh, where's your name, lady? I believe it's Ilias. Ilias Court, yes. So, anyway, I digress. Um, but I really do like this. I, I'm assuming that everyone from Ilias Court is uh, essentially a pure blood. Because I don't think that they were turned. Um, I don't even know if that exists in, in this universe yet. It hasn't been established that if you're bitten by a vampire, you turn. Or if you're just bitten, you die. Because that's, that's how it is in some um, 
universes in different universes. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to turn if you're bitten. Kind of like in review with the vampire. If, if you know if the vampire just feeds on you, you're going to die unless he feeds you his blood or... I'm sure there's other sort of rituals that they go by. But anyway, I'm going way off on tangents here. I'm sorry. Um, he does come with a regular short sword, um, or I should just say a sword because it's not technically a short sword. It's just a sword. So there you go. We've seen this sword numerous times with other figures. You're going to see a lot of the, the same old stuff with this guy, but it's because he's a re-release from Wave 1.0. He also comes with his dagger here. We've seen this dagger multiple times before. It would have been a nice little touch for him, and I might go ahead and do it myself. Seeing as all of his bladed uh, weapons are supposed to be poison-tipped or, um, I guess I should say, um, paralyzing <laughs> paralyzing poison-tipped, um, it would have been nice if they added a little bit of green color at the tips for him. That would have been nice. Uh, but there's no coloring or anything. You just kind of either have to use your imagination or customize it yourself. It also comes with this spear that we've seen numerous times with other figures as well. Um, I, I still think it looks good. I like the sculpt. It, it, you know, it works for the for the figure, works for the character. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty pleased with how he turned out. Um, let's put his collar back on here. I'm just kind of left his collar off just because so you can see his face a little bit better. But actually, I'm going to take pop his head off here. And I'm going to bring in this head very closely here. Like I said, the head looks really good. I like the little bit of purple that's going underneath his eyes. And the gray mixed with the black paint shading going throughout his head. And you can see all these veins on the side of his head. The ears, you can see the little crevices in his ears. Looks really good. There's some paint blemishes, a little bit of defects in the ears. Not the biggest deal. It looks like a, where he was cut off the sprue. It's not the biggest deal in the world. There's a divot on the top of my head. Uh, it's still, you know, it's okay. It's fine. I'm not going to pose him from behind anyway, so. Uh, on the front is kind of where it bugs me a little bit. There's a little bit of this, like, speckled stuff on, on his forehead. It's not the worst thing in the world, but, you know, it's just my luck. I always get uh, paint defects or some sort of sculpted defect on the face of my figures for some reason. I don't know why. It's bad luck. But I love the nostrils, love the, uh, the just dead white eyes. It looks great. And just those teeth, like I brought up earlier. Okay, so I showed you the accessories. I showed you the, um, I showed you the head sculpt. Let's go through articulation. Then we'll get through range of motion and everything. I'll show you that he can hold everything before I get to all that. Got his hand. He can hold his sword fine. He's a little bit stiff in his elbow. I'm going to have to loosen that joint up a little bit after the review. But uh, it's just something to point out. I'd rather him be a little bit more stiff and cumbersome than uh, be all loose and wiggly. And that, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, in Wave 1.0, there was a lot of wiggly, loose joints in a lot of people's figures. So there's that. And then we'll just, oop, sorry, buddy. We'll just slide this in his hand here. And he can hold his spear. Just fine. There you go with Carpathius. Looks really good. I like this uh, plastic uh, piece right here. Uh, a part of me wishes it was cloth. I, just a just so like when you put them on a horse or something, it does this like weird thing like this. I know you can kind of work with it and bend it. It's pliable plastic, but I I don't know. I, I just kind of wish it was cloth. Cloth just lays better obviously, but um, it is nicely sculpted, regardless. And then he can also hold his knife, his knife, if you want to have him hold his knife and his sword. So there you go. No issues there. As far as weapon storage does go, he does come with this uh, kind of same old belt. wish they would upgrade these belts, uh, but uh, he can fit his sword through there. If you want to have this cross draw going across his chest, you can have that set up that, that way too. This way, if you want to put the spear in his back, you can. Uh, I'm just going to kind of stick his knife in there for now. Like so. And it's on its own piece, so you can swivel it around in the back if you want to, or on the side. Whichever you so choose. So, there you go with that. Let me get all this stuff out of his hands here. 
Nice little black paint for the handle portion. The rest is just all silver. Same thing goes for the spear, all silver. And a uh, little black right here for the handle for the dagger. The rest is silver. And then obviously we've got brown for the belt. Speaking of articulation, let's go through it. The head can swivel at a full 360 rotation right here. Um, you can get around, obviously the, the collar piece is getting in the way a little bit as you can see, uh, but he can look up about that far and he can look down a little bit. Let's see if we got some job turkeys open here. Oh yeah, we got some job turkeys. <laughs> job turkeys are here in the house. Um, arms go up about that far with the pauldrons on, they go down. Here they are with the pauldrons off. You can do a full 360 rotation. You're gonna to have to remove the pauldron to get a full 360 rotation if you, that's what you want. He's got a single bend at the elbow, less than 90 degrees, leaves you wanting. He's got a swivel at the elbow, swivel at the gauntlet, swivel at the wrist, and a hinge joint. And I do have to say, they did really improve on these peg joints for the hands from Wave 1.0 because a lot of these hands from one Wave 1.0 would fall out constantly. It's kind of a pain in the rear end, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. Well, if you're not gonna lie, then why are you telling people you're not gonna lie? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, swivel at the waist. We've got a bend back, a crunch forward, a pivot side to side, and I show you the full swivel right there. And then we have the splits. Oh, he can do the splits. The Van Damme it. And then the legs go forward. Legs go back a little bit. Upper thigh swivel. Single jointed knee, which gives a good bend, about a little bit less than 90 degrees. Knee swivel. Swivel at the ankle. Points to heel. Points to toe. Ankle pivot. And two peg holes at the bottom of his feet. And that's uh, his articulation in a nutshell. Or not in a nutshell. Oh, I'm in a nutshell. How did I get in this nutshell? I don't know. Sorry. Bad Austin Powers reference there. Bad, bad to the bone. But he is bad to the bone. Speaking of bad to the bone, he looks dope. I like him a lot. Don't really have too many gripes with this one. I know there were some issues with a lot of people's pegs breaking on the first release. I'm... I th I'm pretty sure that they fixed that in this run. It, uh, I'm pretty sure that they upgraded the plastic, so you're not going to really have to worry about the peg and the waist snapping off. I've not, I have a, I have, I want to say 95% of all the Mythic Legions released, and I haven't had one peg snap on me. So I don't, you really shouldn't have that issue. Um, I think it's few and far between you find that issue. Uh, but just be careful, you know, always be careful with your figures just because it didn't happen with mine doesn't mean it won't happen with yours. Miles do vary on action figures per collector. Um, like I said, he does come with the three adapters that came with all the advent of decay figures. Uh, let's get him in some size comparisons really quick. I'm not going to back him up that far. Let's get him in a little closer so we can see some nice, little, nice paint detail and everything. He looks so good. All right. <laughs> all right all right so we'll do start off with our our typical or we'll switch it up though we're switching up characters here no more multiple man i'm retiring him all right we'll do a little cyclops so there's your marvel legends look and then we'll go big guy we'll go one of my favorite big guy characters one of my favorite figures from last year period one of my favorite marvel legends period oh yeah big boy so we got uh, Marvel Legends Jim Lee Cyclops and uh, Marvel Legends Walgreens exclusive Fantastic Four Wave Thing. Hopefully we get it at Doctor Doom down the line. Who knows? But there's your comparisons with Marvel Legends. If you want to see a female Marvel Legend, I'll bring in Psylocke really quick just to show you. There you are. And she is standing all types of weird. I'm trying to get her in like a neutral pose, but she... This isn't necessarily the best Psylocke, I'm going to be honest with you. But I don't feel like spending $100 on a Rebel Tech Psylocke. So, there you go. And then we'll bring in... We'll bring in... Oh, I'm sure you guys want to see this. I know you guys want to see this. How does the Gamorrean Guard look next to him? Looks great. 
So if you wanted to use them together, you could. And we'll just bring in my favorite Han Solo. Best Han Solo figure from the Black Series. There we go. Oh, oh, you gonna stand, buddy? There we go. So there you go. That's how they stack up. Let's get them out of here. Next up, we shall do. Who shall we do? We'll switch up the DC Universe Classics, and since his movie's coming out, or is already out, I should say, and I haven't gone and seen it, I know Blasphemy will bring in Shazam. One of my favorite characters of all time. I don't know why I'm talking in this voice, but I am. And then we'll bring in... Who else? Who else should we bring in? You know? <laughs> I was going to I was almost going to put a Transformer up there. I'm like, what, what the hell is the point of that? All right, so we'll just bring in a WWE figure. There you go. There's Paul Heyman. He's so happy to be here. It's Paul Heyman. Would you like to be a Paul Heyman guy? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Enough of that shit. There you go with DC Universe Classics and a WWE Elite figure. And last up, you know who's coming. <laughs> you know who's coming. That's right. We've got Vicor. And we've got who? Who? Who's coming next, guys? Who's coming? Who is it? Who's coming up next? Who is it? That's right, sure, Gideon Heaven's Brand. <laughs> sure, Gideon Heaven's Brand. There you go, we just stacks up. Well, with the rest. Okay. So, there is your... There is Carpathius. He is dope. I gave him, uh... Da, 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 da. He's scary, so I'm giving him two scared thumbs up. There you go. Okay, don't bite me. All right, all right. So there's Carpathius. He looks really cool. Um, I like the detail. I like the little uh, silver rivets on his uh, on his armor going throughout. It really does pull out that uh, purple color going throughout, and the design uh, as far as that's concerned. The black. It works so well with uh, the purple. They just go together. It's kind of like lamb and tuna fish. No? Oh, do you prefer spaghetti and meatball, maybe? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> there you go. Uh, looks really cool. I like the, the little loincloth in the front. That looks nice. Here, Here's what he looks like from the back. And that's where you would put the wing adapter right there. Or you can attach the wing adapters and take these pauldrons off directly into the back ports. Right there, if, if you have wings and you wanted to go that route. I'm actually considering giving him wings. Giving him some Red Bull, and that'll give him some wings. But there's Carpathius. Okay, moving on. Moving on, Billy. Let's bring in the new guy in town. The new Daniel Bryan, right? Let's bring in Delta Gar, the Destroyer. Delta Guy, the Destroyer. <laughs> you know, not, not to be confused with Brock Lesnar, you know, or Conan, you know. I should have brought my Conan figure up here for uh, comparison. God dang it. Dang it, lang it. Well, essentially, that's what Vicor is, so. Oh, well. All right, so he comes with a quite a few accessories. Obviously, he comes with the back adapters. The, uh, get them out of the bag so you can see them because I know someone's going to be like, I you going to show the back adapters. <laughs> okay, there's the back adapters. There you go. And they just plug right into that back port. So there you go, Billy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey. Bad habit. Hey, hey, hey. All right, so he comes with that's this stuff right here. Now, the, the one new thing that he does really come with, everything else has pretty much been released before, um, is his new dwarf sword from the Dwarf um, Advent of Decay weapons pack. And it was also the same sword that came with, um, oh, what the heck's his name? The Dwarf King. Oh, for God's sake. Brain fart. Anyway, moving on. Here we go. It is painted different. It's in a different deco. Um, he's got a silver blade instead of a black blade. 
Um, so there you go with that. The crown is removable, and I will remove it so you can see what his head looks like. Now, with this figure, let me give you a little story on how this figure came about, in case you don't know. Little, little bit of history lesson for you. Um, with the previous wave of Advent of Decay, um, you had one tier where it was a, I think it was a $10,000 buy-in um, to have your own likeness and your own character made by the Four Horsemen. Now, there was an individual that did decide to pick that um, and paid ten grand, you know, to have his likeness made, and it looks great. Don't get me wrong. I'm being honest here. Is it $10,000 worth of a figure? But, I mean, it is still cool to have your figure in a line. I don't know if I would necessarily, myself, pay $10,000 to have one made. But I'm just being honest here and being objective. Um, anywho, uh, that person did choose... I, I don't... I know his... I know what he looks like. I've seen pictures of him. And it does look very much like his pictures. So... Um, it, with the exception, I think he actually had long hair, but they gave him short hair here. Not the biggest deal in the world. Um, I don't know his name offhand. I've seen it on the, uh, Four Horsemen, um, Source Horsemen fan board. If you want to go up there and check it out, you can. I'm sure someone posted, a that, that, uh, thread is still up. But he does come with a couple few things. So that's essentially how this figure was made. Pretty cool. It's nice to actually have a new character with a new head scan, and I'm not saying that they haven't done that in the past, but it's nice to have this, and it's nice to say that, you know, you actually have a fan's head sculpt a part of the line. So that's pretty cool. You know, if, if I could afford that, I would, but I don't have that kind of disposable income. So I'll stick with that'smyface.com. <laughs> anyway, uh, it looks really cool. Let me just take this, uh, I'll, I'll shut my mouth now, and I'll take this piece off. Looks pretty cool. He does not look like anyone else it's a brand new all different looking head sculpt brand new brand new sculpt in general i think it's such a nice touch and they didn't have to go this route but it's such a a really nice touch that they had a removable crown piece um and it's not the first time they've done it they did that with the uh, the dwarf king one of my favorite if not my favorite mythic legions um but this this is up there i, I think it's pretty cool they even added in a little earring for him that's pretty nice i'm not sure about sure about the cauliflower cauliflowered ear there i'm not sure if that's accurate but uh, uh and he's got it on both sides but still nonetheless i think they did a really good job with the sculpt very pleased with the figure overall and uh like i said here he is let me back him up a little bit sorry for the blurry vision there i'll take his sword out of his hand i'll take his shield out of his hand and we'll put the other head on so let's take his head off Really quick, and we can put his head on, his helmet head on, helmet head, good old helmet head. And this is the head that we've seen with previous figures. We've seen it with uh, the Coliseum wave, with wave 1.0. Um, so it, it's nothing really all that different. I feel like if you're buying this figure, I mean, why not buy it for this nice new head they gave us with the removable uh kind of crown. I think that's pretty awesome. Looks really good. And actually, you know what? I just realized why those ears are pinched in. It's due to the head being, uh, or the crown being removable, so it can kind of slide onto the head without really giving any friction marks. So that's pretty nice. It's actually a, quite a good design, I think. But here is the sculpt of the head. Let me get in close here so you can see the design. Like I said, it's pretty much just a re-release head, just a different paint deco. I really like the, the green and the gold. I think that's what drew me in so much with this. The green, the gold, and the black. Because green's my favorite color. Um, it's a cool little design in the back of the, the helmet right there. Looks really good. Very pleased with how he turned out. And, you know, like I said, if you want to have him, you know, in his warrior mode or his war mode, you could just put this helmet on him and call it a day. Or if you just want him as a different character... Um, you could just pop this helmet head on and go that route. Um, you don't have to necessarily go bandolier route with the, the belt, but I think it makes sense for the pauldron being on, because where else is the pauldron going to be hanging out, holding on to, if it's 
if it's on him because <laughs> he's bare chested. <laughs> um, the rest of the body looks really good. The gauntlets look really nice. A nice, just really good flow of the green, the gold, and the black. It just looks really good with the gold rivets, um, the black little design portion painted. Let me get in a little bit closer so you can see said designs on that hand. And it's a nice, uh, I want to say it's a nice metallic paint. Looks really good. Gives, it an, gives off a nice little shine to it. That's cool. And then with the thigh guards right here, really good design. Very pleased with uh, the overall design uh, options that you have with this guy. He's got the armor on one side and no armor on the other. Very similar to Atlas the Conqueror. Um, he is a goody-goody. He does, uh, he is a part of the clan of Leodysseus which is Attila Leoser's um, army. Uh, I, I'll actually read off his thing really quick. If you want to know. I haven't read this, so bear with me. <sighs> with an ancestry dating back to the Golden Age of the Mercurian army, Delta Gar the Destroyer is no stranger to warfare's devastating Toll. A towering figure, which means he's, I'm, a, I'm assuming if he's towering, then he's got to be at least like six foot five, six foot six, maybe six seven. Uh, he serves as the leader and defender of the bustling town of Grassmid. Okay, sounds pretty cool. Uh, oh, I lost my spot here. <laughs> this is a heavy mantle to bear because the Grassmids. Geographic position makes makes it the army of Leo Decius's first line of defense against the encroaching forces of the Legion of Arthur. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. I like that. So he's front of the line guy. I like him already. Uh, luckily for his people, Delta Gar accepts every challenge, carrying his might mighty war hammer into battle with his brave resolve. That's pretty cool. I like his little read up. It's nice. Nice little read up. Hopefully, I like. I would like to see this character in the next comic, uh, if and when that ever comes out. Uh, he does have earrings on both sides. I'll show you that in a second. But that's what he looks like. He looks really cool. Love the green, man. If I were to have a, a Mythic Legion made of myself, I would have to go with green. It would just that would be my thing. Uh, lifting up the thigh armor, you've got some nice black paint deco. Look at this. It's just such such a nice flow for this character. I really dig it. I really do. Let's get this head off because I want I want his actual head on here. Because it just looks so unique, so cool. Love the crown. Let's get in here with this head sculpt really quick. Then I'll get to the rest of his uh, accessories. We'll go through that. Looks very nicely done. Very pleased with this overall. Very, very cool. Hair, hair looks really cool. It almost looks like one of those custom heads I posted a video about that I had that I purchased from uh, eBay a while ago. A while, a while ago? No, a while ago. As you can see, the earrings on both sides of the ears. Really cool. Really do like the design of this guy. Very nicely done. I was actually assuming when I, when I first saw the prototype for him, I was like, oh, it, it might be another guy for the Noble Bear Clan, but Regardless, no. He is part of the Leo Dusius. But okay, let's get him aside really quick. I already showed you the crown caming coming off. Caming off. I don't know what, what's wrong with my mouth right now. It's just not working. We've got a nice silver paint for the blade, and then we've got a nice gold for the handle and the handle or uh, the hand guard, excuse me. I like the design of this. This is one of my favorite new designs for the weapons from uh, the Advent of Decay weapons packs. Looks really good. Very much like uh, maybe like a Conan the Barbarian type style sword. Looks really good. Even like the uh, little ridges sculpted right here for the handle. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. So good job on that sword, Four Horsemen. I like the paint deco for this shield. This is a shield from Wave 1.0 that we've seen before, but, uh, you know, it fits the, uh, the character, and it works. 
It does have the new peg system on the back. You just simply, this comes in two pieces when you first get it, and you just attach this uh, handle piece to the shield portion right there. Nice little gold plastic shine to it. Looks really good. And then we've got some black paint for the inside crevice for the detail. Very nicely done. Then we have some silver paint for the rivets. Looks really good. Very nice for the shield. And then the last piece is his Warhammer. In the, uh, it's, it almost gives off like he's uh, got a very Celtic design, you know? So, you got the nice little painted green rivets for the Warhammer right here. He doesn't come with any other um, options for the Warhammer. It just comes like this. There's the gold right here. Looks really good. Everything, I'm very pleased with how these two turned out. So, very nicely done with that. And he comes with an extra head. So, total, he comes with, I guess you could include the belt too. Uh, five pieces total. Four pieces if you don't count the belt. Six pieces if you count the removable uh, crown right here. So, very nicely done, very cool, very Conan, Conan the Barbarian-esque uh, style character. As far as his articulation does go, um, you can get a swivel at the head, a full 360 if you need to, just so you know it's there. Uh, this will hinder him a little bit. Um, not the end of the world, you just simply remove the pauldron if you need to. And then you can do that if you want to have his neck snapped or something, I don't know. <laughs> but... Uh, there's with the pauldron on. I'll do articulation, range of motion with the pauldron on and then off, just so you can see the difference between it. The arms can go up about that far. That's pretty much maxed out. And then this arm on this side. Uh, you do get a little bit of better range of motion with the side that's not armored, just due to the sculpting of the armor kind of getting in the way of the joint. So you'll get better range of motion without the armor piece on. Arms go down, down, and that's pretty much all you're going to get with this. This will move and it will depeg itself if you continue to go further up, but it is uh, a movable piece. Uh, arms go back, and this is a full 360 rotation right here without the shoulder pauldron on. And then you have a swivel at the waist. You've got a crunch back and forth, a pivot side to side, swivel. Let's see if he's got some jive turkeys. Oh, he's kind of turkeyless right here. I'll give him a little turkey. Oh, that's it. That's all you get. Um, <laughs> his head can kind of tilt a little bit. So you get that uh, little bit of a head tilt right there. And then we can do the Van Dam splits. Very nicely done. Legs go forward. Legs go back. Upper thigh swivel. A single jointed knee. Knee swivel. Swivel at the foot. Ankle pivot, points the toe, points the heel, and two peg holes. So there you go with Delta Guard, the destroyer. De -de 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 Delta. Sir, are you flying Delta today? Delta? Delta Guard? I don't know. I don't know. Can I have my ticket refunded? Sir, I heard you needed your ticket refunded. I'm the president of Delta. <laughs> Delta Gar, the destroyer. <laughs> I don't know. What I don't even know what I'm talking about. It didn't even make any sense. All right, let me just get his uh, weapons back in his hands here. There we go. This is how I'm going to have him set up here. I like him with the sword. Not so much with the war hammer. I feel like too many people have the war hammer already. And I think it'd be a shame to give him this nicely new, newly sculpted sword and not give it to him. You know. So I'm gonna give him the sword. I'm going to put the Warhammer somewhere. If you want to have him with the Warhammer on his back, you can just kind of slide it on his back if you want to. It looks ridiculous, though, <laughs> I think. Like, how would he even grab that off his back? <laughs> you know? It would be cool if they came up with, a, like, a new sculpt for, the, for a different Warhammer, like a smaller one. You know? That would be pretty cool. Smaller Warhammers. But he looks really cool. I'm very pleased with him. Don't really have any issues. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Did I miss doing the swivels in the elbows? Or the swivels at the gauntlet? Or the swivels at the wrist? Or the bends? He's got the bends. But there you go, just in case I forgot it. 
Sometimes I forget what I do like two seconds later. I have early Alzheimer's. Early Alzheimer's. There you go. He looks fantastic. Let's bring in Carpathius really quick. And then that will be that. Sean Connery Vorsch? Let me ask you something. Has there ever been any man you cannot seduce? <laughs> oh, boy. Son, do that bow. You get to know you better. All right, anyway, enough of that. Sean Connery shit. All right. I don't really know how I want to have good old Carpathia set up here. I definitely want to give Carpathius his own sword, so I might outsource a like a custom sword for him or something. Let's go with this look for him. The spear. I feel like he wouldn't roll with a spear, though. I feel like he's going to dual wield his sword. In a, let's go with that route. All right, whoops, as I throw the... <laughs> I feel like he would dual wield with a sword and a knife. Just, just my preference. Let's get him in here. Sorry. All right. There we go. Back him up a little bit. Don't worry. I didn't forget to do a size comparison. I'll do it in a second. Just kind of want to bring them in here together. Friends forever. Hey, buddy. Hmm. Want to go to the club? I don't go to clubs. I go to nightclubs, get it? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> that was that was awful and cringe. I know. Cringe Central, call me cringe. All right. So let's bring him in here and get him situationed. And we'll bring him in a little closer. Right there. There we go. Okay, let's bring in Psyche. Cyclops. Cyclops. There you go with Mr. Cyclops. I know I don't necessarily have to do this because they're essentially the same height, Carpathius and Delta Guard, but I'm sure someone out there will be like, why didn't you do that twice for the little? So there you go with Thing, Marvel Legends Thing. And uh, Marvel Legends Jim Lee Cyclops. If you wanted to have him as a uh, Hercules, you could. If you wanted to. It won't be comic book accurate, but eh, it could, could work. It could work. These are not available at Store Horsemen. I, uh, there was actually, if you're wondering where the heck I got these from, because I'm sure someone will ask. Just an FYI, you can get them off Big Bad Toy Store. It's not where I got them from. I actually pre-ordered these last year. Um, this was based. This wave was based on a fan poll. This is why you guys got to join SourceHorseman.com. Join the forum. Be a part of the community. Contribute. And they usually do fan polls, stuff like this. Because a lot of people missed out. There's a lot of new collectors out there that missed out on the 1.0 1, 1 wave, you know? There you go. I think he works with the Gamorrean Guard. Obviously not with Han Solo. Unless you, you know, I guess he is considered a giant. That's what his bio says. So <laughs> if you wanted to go that route, you could. So there's with a, two Black Series figures. And then here he is with a, you know, another Marvel Legend. And then we'll bring in Lanky, Miss Lanky. She's on the She-Hulk body. She's taller than he is. My kind of woman right there. How you doing? Anyway, okay. Oh, sorry, Cyclops. Psylocke. Let's call her Cyclops. Okay, next up, we'll do the we'll do the do with the Paul Heyman dude. Paul Heyman. DC Universe Classics. There you go. Cool beans. Cool, cool beans. And then last up. You know, we got to bring in the good old Vicor. Back you up a little bit. And... Sir Gideon Heaven's brand. There you go. That's how he stacks up. 
Let's not get him. Heaven's bright. Say, I get him. Sorry. There you go. That's how he stands up with a Motu Classic. Other Mythic Legion. And that, my friends, is that. Uh, essentially, the packaging is the same as Wave 1.0. I guess I could show it really quick. I'll show his little read-up. For those of you watching this on playback, you can pause that and read it if you want to. And there's his little head. <laughs> Hello. And then there's the front of the packaging. There's the clan logo. And there's the back card artwork. We've seen that before. It's the old one. And then here's Carpathius. His read up. Short, sweet, to the point. And there's his little photo. And there's his clan logo. And then there's the back. Okay, so I think, I think therefore I am, I think therefore I am at the end of this review. Carpathius, what are my final thoughts on these two? Um, I want to say I think the, the quality control issues that they had in Wave 1.0 have been fixed. Uh, I haven't really had any issues with any loose joints, uh, overly loose joints I should say. Um, I don't really have any issues with um, paint apps rubbing off or, or anything like that. The only really big issue that I did have was the little bit of blemishes on his head, which is unfortunate. But, that, you know, that's just my luck. I always get uh, a defect, and whenever the defect is, it's always on the face, of course. Uh, but that's just my bad luck. So hopefully with yours, it won't be there. Uh, Deltagar, I think, outshines everyone in this wave. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, well, with the exception of Atlas the Conqueror, since he's essentially kind of close to Atlas's design uh, here and there. Um, I want to say as far as originality goes, um, they're all really good. They're all very original characters. You'll, you'll learn to love them. There are some Legion builders in this. I didn't really go in on the Legion builders. I just wanted to go after the characters that I, I didn't have before, and I picked up an extra Atlas the Conqueror because it was a good price, and I, I know he goes for like over a hundred dollars, which is just ridiculous. So, uh, even if you, I think even if you get them for fifty bucks or forty bucks on Big Bad Toy Store, I still I still think these figures are a decent price. Um, you know, if you don't want to, uh, you know, you know, break your wallet, uh, I'd say stick to a, a few of them. You know, get uh, get the ones that you don't have, and it, you know, if you want a really cool centerpiece. I think Deltagar is a really good option for you. Uh, I really like that head sculpt. It looks fantastic. It looks like the, the you know, the, the person it's based off of, uh, with the exception of, I supposedly he had his long hair, but they shortened it up. I still think it looks really cool. I like the short hair. It's very unique to this character, and I almost feel like giving him this helmeted head is kind of a disservice due to the uh, nicely done sculpt by Eric Treadway for this fan-made character and I, I really do like it i think it's a good solid sculpt overall um carpathius i love his design he's gonna fit perfect with the rest of my vampire knights and and that whole rest of that clan with baron volagar and and um all of them period uh i really like the the weapon choice for deltagar uh i would have been it would have been nice you know if Carpathius got a little bit more love, but if you did get the weapons pack from the Advent of Decay line, then you can spruce Carpathius up with some of the um, the vampire weapons pack weapons. So um, you could go that route as well. Um, overall, two thumbs up for both. This one's still scared because it's getting cl it's close to him, but this one's a very confident. Dest Destroyer-esque thumb up. And this one's a little nervous thumb up. But <laughs> just because it's close to him. Anyway. <laughs> um, but I'm an idiot. I, I digress. <laughs> um, they're really good figures. Go get them at the end of the day. Joking aside, uh, I really like, I think, the, the greens on him. The, the paint deco, the, the style of Deltagar really does shine. 
it really does look good. And I would definitely recommend both of these if you don't have them. So, uh, but with that being said, that's going to end the review. Um, before I go, though, I always like to chat with the people here. How's everybody doing? I know I haven't done a live review in a little bit. So, I wanted to say hello to Zorpox, Gaz, Woodman, and uh, I think that's it. Cool. Cool beans. And if you guys are just lurking, that's cool too, you know. But uh, am I getting any trolls? I have two trolls. I have the stone troll and I have the forest troll. Um, I would like to get Brontus down the line, but I just don't want to spend another $200. Um, I spent $200 on the, the forest troll and the storm troll. Stone Troll, and I passed on Brontus and the Ice Troll that are that is coming out slash almost out. So, uh, no, I didn't do reviews on them either. I, I'll probably do a review a little bit down. So right now it's kind of difficult for me to do large figure reviews because I don't have a tripod, for, and I'm only using my iPod or iPad iPod, <sighs> my iPad, and I don't have a tripod for it. So it's kind of a hassle to do larger figure reviews, which is unfortunate, but uh, I'm working on it. Don't worry. I'm going to get back to my camera and my better edited reviews soon. So, but these are really cool figures. Like I said, I love me some Mythic Legions and that's perfect timing because I was starting to get that, uh, starting to miss doing Mythic Legions reviews. And I really do like the way that these guys turned out, especially Delta Gar. So, and it's actually nice that, uh, you know, we didn't get everybody I wanted in this wave. I really wanted Otho, even though I ended up getting Otho, but that was due to uh, another collector actually helping me out, which is nice. And if you're not, a, if, you know, if you haven't joined any of the Mythic Legions uh, community pages, uh, especially the Facebook pages, everyone's really nice. Um... And if someone's trying to sell you a figure, they're not trying to, you know, rape your wallet. Um, you know, everyone's pretty cool um, as far as the community goes. I've never really ran into anyone that's, you know, a jerk or anything like that. So uh, stick within the community. It's a pretty solid, good uh, action figure community. And for a, you know, the community is growing too. That's a good thing. I've never seen uh, a community grow this fast for a specialty line like this. It's It's pretty... It's pretty nice to see, and the way that people treat each other is is good, too. So, but, uh, yeah. Oh, I just found my pointer now. It was on the ground. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much going to end the review here. If you guys have any more questions, this is the question segment. Uh, I'll give you guys about 30 seconds. If I don't get any questions within the 30 seconds, then, you know, I'll just end the review here. No big deal. But uh, if you want any questions or you have any questions about the figures specifically, if you want me to show you something about the figures, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to oblige. But uh, yeah, very pleased with this. Like I said, I only got three figures in this wave. It was another Atlas and these two and I called it a day. Um, if memory serves me right, I'm pretty sure I ordered two Delta Gars, but uh, somehow I only got one. It's not the biggest deal in the world and I'm sure they'll fix that. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I guess it does give you the option, if you do have the helmeted head, uh, you could army build him if you wanted to. I think he ran around the $33 range. So, I don't know. If you have the the income to afford a $33, you know, army builder, then, hell, go for it. But I think it would be, I really do think it would be a shame to kind of, you know, have him without this head sculpt on, you know. Looks really cool. But, uh, all right, I might just end it here. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, these guys are really cool. Go check them out. I would say even if you just get one figure in the All-Star Wave 2.0, I'd say get Delta Gar. I think he's a, a nice pickup. And you never know. I, I, I think it's few and far between that we get re-releases for fan-made figures. Um I don't know, maybe they'll retool this head, maybe they'll reuse this sculpt for another character down the down the line, maybe one without a beard or something like that, or maybe one with longer hair. Um, they could do that, they could just retool the head. But uh, that would be pretty cool too, maybe he has like an evil brother, evil twin brother. Huh? It, hey, why not? It could happen, right? 
<laughs> but um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool to see. I am excited about the uh, the ogres coming. Um, that'll be pretty cool too. So and the, and the uh, berserker, sorry, berserker and the ogres coming out soon. So that'd be pretty awesome as well. But it's nice to do a Mythic Legions review. I know I haven't done one in a while, but it's it's a breath of fresh air to kind of get it in with that. And I don't want you guys to think that I'm not going to be doing other reviews, like my Joe reviews, stuff like that. Uh, it's just been, it's been a busy month with a lot of stuff going on, me getting a lot of figures in. Um, but uh, I got some really cool reviews coming up, so... Stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching as always. You guys are awesome. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great weekend. Be safe. And I'll see you guys on the flip.